Here today with Larry Turner, mayoral candidate. Welcome to the Critically United podcast. We are broadcasting from the Casita here in San Diego, California. And Larry has been kind enough to come again. We actually did a uh, sit down and we had no sound. So we're going to redo it. And I think that's a testament to Larry's character, which is he is going to be a problem solver, which I like. Well, thanks. It's also a testament <laughs> to enjoying talking to you. So. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. So let's jump right in. Um, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, uh, you as a person. Um, I know you were a Marine for 23 years. Maybe mm -hmm. you can talk about kind of why you got enlisted and kind yeah. of a little bit about your background. Sure. Yeah, well, I grew up in California. We moved around a lot and um, pretty much all over the state. No no further than Redding, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, but we were all over all the time. But uh, so grew up around California and all over. Uh, but um, finished school. Went to college. Nobody in my family had ever gone to college, so that was mm. kind of pounded into me. Like, um, hey, you, you can do whatever you want, but you got to go to college first. Right, right. So uh, it, it did that. Uh, got got my uh, degree, and then I was going to call uh, the Marine Corps, you know, and sign up. And um, it was um, one of those things that since I had a degree, they uh, asked me, "Hey, do you want to be an officer?" And mm -hmm. and I said, "Well." tell me about it. <laughs> and they, they kind of described it as being like a quarterback on the football team and you know, being the team leader. Oh like, yeah, that sounds cool. So, um, you know, I signed up and, and did that. And I did the Marines because I, I had everybody in my family, uh, was very it, it devoted to service to the community, mostly with military. Gotcha. Um, but a lot of like public service and volunteer time in the community, local community and all that. So I always, always had that kind of drilled in me and, and, uh, believed I wanted to do something like that too. But I had one Marine, uh, family member and he was a really cool, uncle who was like the, <laughs> had the had the coolest stories and uh you know nice. just a really really neat guy so uh, i i wanted to do that and uh with the marine corps and became an officer went to quantico and did that for 23 years and um you know started off uh platoon commander i think i was 23 when i got my first platoon and wow. had like 30 marines working working uh, so how was that at that age i was well looking back on it i was just a kid right <laughs> so it was uh but at the time you it's know it's a lot of responsibility heck yeah yeah i mean I still see that now with police, you know, like you, you see the amount of responsibility you give these young people and, um, right. and then, you know, now as a, a guy in my fifties, you know, it's like, <laughs> wow, how do you, that is crazy. I know. Isn't it crazy when you look back? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I handled it well and I, I used it as a, it was a great learning experience and, um, I was smart enough to know that, you know, these guys don't work for me. I work for them. You know, I was always the first one there, last one to leave, and right. um, never really had a day off. Just always getting them ready so that um, if we deployed or we, um, you know, had got called to go do something, uh, that they they would all be able to do their job well and come back alive and, right. and all that. So, I just um, always felt like I was their servant, you know, in a way, and um, mm -hmm. and then also just smart enough to know that I don't know everything. <laughs> you know, learn that right <laughs> away. So, had really good uh, platoon sergeants that I you know would listen to, but. Kept moving up through the ranks and, and had bigger and bigger organizations, yeah. you know, from so, 300 to the last one being like just under a thousand. Wow. So, yeah, it was wow. pretty good. So it sounds, I mean, it sounds like uh, the idea of service was drummed into you at a very yeah. young age. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, I had, uh, I had not planned to make the Marine Corps a career. I uh, just thought I'd do it for, you know, four or six years, just do my, my service, but I, sure. I just really enjoyed it. And they just kept offering me, you know, better, cool positions, you know, to, Hey, is that, is that, in, is that how they keep you in? I don't know if it's like the, it's just, it just naturally happens that way. But the whole <laughs> idea, I guess, cause I moved around a lot too. I liked moving uh, to something else, you know, mm -hmm. and I, and I kept doing that. So, um, it's kind of funny that all these years later, this is the longest I've been in one place <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> Uh, but I enjoy it. You know, it's, I thought that it would, you know, I'd maybe get that itch to like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go, go do a different job or a different career. But, uh, but I did that in Marine Corps. They kept saying, uh, well, if you, if you want to stay in, you know, we're going to offer you to go here do that. And, gotcha. um, and, and just kept having awesome opportunities and really exciting stuff I got to do. So it was, it where, was fun. where was your favorite place that you were, uh, uh, stationed? Well, um, yeah, I, probably Hawaii, I guess. Mm. Um, a lot of people don't like living in Hawaii. They love visiting Hawaii, but <laughs> I really jumped into the culture there and had a lot of friends uh, from there and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, did a lot of surfing and in my free time. And uh, But, you know, I was never at a place that I was stationed. You know, I was gone in other parts of the world all the time. Sure. So that's where my car stayed. <laughs> you know, that's where uh, right. most of my stuff stayed. I would, sure. I would just leave with a couple bags and, and be gone for a long time. But, uh, yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Hawaii a lot. And I thought I'd stay there, you know, for, a f you know, another few years in the Marine Corps at least. But 
really just wanted to get back to California because of, uh, I mean, I was always going to come back, you know, eventually, yeah. but I came back a little sooner than a full, you know, 30 year career because I was, uh, you know, I had family here and, uh, they were all getting a little older and you know, Pe- people don't there. understand the draw here. I'm telling you, I, yeah. I moved away for a while yeah. to uh, Boston for two and a half years yeah. and I would have dreams. Mm. <laughs> about being in California, being at the ocean, you know, surfing, yeah. hang out yeah. at the beach, whatever. And I wake up and go, God, I miss it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can see Boston. Uh, you know, Hawaii's great. Um, and, uh, you know, no, no better place than San Diego. But man, that, it's just a different kind of, mm-hmm. it's like, a, you know, and the water being warmer too. Oh, yeah. I, I hardly nice. surf uh, out here. You know, I surfed out there all the time. Even on Christmas Day, I'd go out surfing in right. the middle of winter. You know, the water's always warm, no wetsuits. Yeah. Uh, everybody's super friendly. Yeah. Out there. I think it's sure. funny people think the water's warm here. You ever see Heck you ever yeah, see yeah. tourists in the summer? They come out in yeah. like June. Yeah, and you can go down to the beach and they're. Like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I uh, I got to go get a new wetsuit. Actually, I was just talking to somebody about that. They were telling me where to go, but it's just weird the whole wetsuit thing. Um, you know, you, you could just literally just have a pair of board shorts in the car, and any yeah. day of the year, uh, you know, January, you just right. jump in the water and it was warm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It really spoiled out there. <laughs> yeah. So before we talk about the mayor, mayor Oral race uh we're gonna talk about homelessness yeah and larry has a very unique perspective and i think a lot of knowledge based upon working with homeless and working downtown yeah so let's jump into the next phase which Mm -hmm. is uh working with the san diego police department so maybe you can describe kind of what you do for them and sure kind of what your experiences are well, um, st- starting off when I when I left the Marine Corps and came to San Diego Police Department, it was a uh, uh, that wasn't like the original intent. The original intent was to work with homeless, and mm-hmm. uh, I had um, had a uh, you know place in my heart for homeless vets specifically, sure. but all homeless people, um, having gone overseas a lot and been been part of different operations and seeing third world countries and uh, different humanitarian crises, and and then seeing that happen in America was very right. uh, you know made me angry. Um, so. Uh, I felt like, man, I'm, I'm off doing my service for 23 years. What are you guys, what have you, you know, what have these politicians been doing? Right. And, and uh, just wasteful spending and, and all that stuff, not to get in politics, but it yeah. just, I could see that, why is this problem still happening here? Right. And, and everybody's blaming each other and, and patting themselves <laughs> on the back that they were spending a lot of money on it. But I, so I thought I'd get involved in that. And like I said, with specifically with homeless vets. So, um, you know, I, I came back to San Diego for good, um, but with that intent and, um, I decided uh, to join the police department only off of some recommendation from an FBI guy that used to work for me back in, in Hawaii. And he, he said, hey, uh, you know, to get reacquainted with the city quick, you could join the police department. <laughs> and it always seemed like an interesting job to be a cop for a little bit. And I thought I'd do sure. it for a couple of years just to um, take that two years to really get reacquainted with everything going on in San Diego and all the different nonprofits and everything. So uh, when I joined the PD, <clears throat> you know, I was just a regular patrol officer and was doing that. And, but man, just the excitement of the, the, the helping people all the time mm-hmm. every day multiple times a day um you know so many cool things would have you'd forget even things that happened that day right that for a most people would be a really significant thing that happened in their life but there'd be like multiple things like that every day and right i really i just enjoyed the helping those people and um yeah i felt because i was older i was maybe a little bit better at it you know having seen other things around the world it wasn't like those sad experiences or heartbreaking experiences impacted me as much as it would like the younger cops. So sure. I, I, I could say that I really enjoyed it more where some of the other police maybe, uh, you know, it was impacting them more negatively. Right. I, to me, it was, I, I've yeah. been dealing with that my whole life. So um, really jumped into the homeless situation as a police officer um, and, and would work with the homeless and just, I, I felt I still feel, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's just a fact. I mean, it's not a feel, uh, is that, you know, they're San Diegans just like the rest of us. They just don't right. have a nice house and, and the job and, and all they maybe have some issues they're dealing with, but, uh, I wanted to give them the same service and, and support, uh, as, as anybody else in San Diego would get. So, sure. um, started treating them like that. I saw some of the policy differences that was happening with, uh, the, the previous mayor and the current mayor, just really big difference. Um, yeah, I was hopeful that the new mayor would uh, allow the police department to do some things to help the homeless a little bit better. Um, you know, he, he, he said a lot of that. And so yeah. I, I stuck around. Again. Oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, so I was really, um, a fan. I mean, I thought, wow, this is gonna be great. This is gonna yeah, be yeah. a new era and like really turn the city around. And right. yeah, it just, uh, yeah, it did not go. Yeah. Well. Um, so, um, stayed on the department a little bit longer than I I'd planned uh, only because, uh, I, I had a chance to do the SWAT team and I, I did that. And I just thought it, I told uh, my wife that was gonna be my last big thing I would do challenge, you know, yeah. because I was going to be the oldest guy on the doing SWAT. Oh, so I, I bet. Thought, <laughs> yeah, it was just a neat record to have, you know, mm-hmm. for a little while. And, and, mm-hmm. and I, I just, so I did that. I did SWAT for a little while and then I was going to get out. They asked me to be the community relations officer 
and uh, kind of sold me on that. And I, I thought, okay, that's a cool way to help. And then, then I'll later go on and do the, the homeless thing. Mm-hmm. So as a community relations officer, I, I deal with all the, uh, I'm like an ambassador for the police department, you know, with all these different community groups, business sure. associations, uh, HOA groups, so that's churches. Let's give everything. you a really broad spectrum of what's yeah. going on. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not just in the patrol car going from call to call, people right. calling for help. I'm I'm going out trying to solve the bigger issues. And, and so many sure. people have problems that don't fit that. It's not a square peg in a, you know, in a square hole. It's it's right. it's just it's different, you know. And so they got to know who I can't call 911 for this. I can't call a non-emergency number. Your online website doesn't work for this. And right. I, I get all these weird. Kind so, what, of what do you think? What kind of skill set does it require? I mean, what what characteristics do you think <laughs> yeah. you have that enable you to do that well? H- having just uh, grown up at a period when we didn't text all the time, <laughs> so, you know, so know how to talk to people, just just knowing how to. It's it sounds like that's funny to have that as a skill set, right? Knowing yeah. how to talk to people in now, the 50s. Nowadays, it is. At you. Okay, yeah, yeah. so you're I know you're able to speak really well. You know, you right. can listen. But that's it. It's just speaking and listening. So I, I I've, I've um, you know, God gave you two ears and one mouth. So, yeah. you know, listen. So what twice portion of, so you're out in the field, uh, what portion of what you're doing is enforcement mm-hmm. versus um, service? Mm, most of it's service with as a CRO. I'd say even as a patrol officer, but uh, enforcement, I, I'll go out, I'm, I, not to, uh, I, I like to still go out in the patrol car and, and take care of the problem instead of, I think most of the time, uh, community relations officers will take that problem and then give it to give it to somebody patrol, else. Well, the patrol sure. guys, that's it's sure. their job to go handle that. But I, 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 I do I do less handling it of myself by myself uh, now because I, yeah. I don't have the extra time I used to. I used to work every day and you know like a hundred hours a week. Yeah. Um, because I really enjoy the job. Um, and so. Um, now that I'm, I'm campaigning my free time <laughs> and you're not, married and you got and kids. Got little, yeah. All that. So I'm, <laughs> I'm juggling it all, but I don't work overtime like I used to. So it is right. much harder for me to, um, to go back out in the patrol car to do my normal day job as the community relations. I'll go to these meetings and talk to the community right. and then to go out after that, my 10 hours are done right. and then patrol and take care of the problem. myself and do the enforcement side, but I used to do it a lot until this campaign started. But, um, so it was mostly, um, educating people on, on the, you know, people think, Gosh, you know the, the department has way more cops than we have, and so they don't understand how uh, how few officers there are. And how, so, how many do we have in the city? Uh, um, we're down in the seventeen hundreds now. Um, what, what should we have? <laughs> that's a that's a that's a debatable. Uh, I, I believe uh, somewhere around with the amount of crime we have, I have to like do all these caveats. Sure, the sure. Amount of crime we have today, right? If we did not, which we don't have a really good homeless plan in effect now, right? We don't have a really good crime fighting plan. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the amount of stuff that happens here every day, probably 3,000 to 3,500 officers. Okay, so we're like right. half. That'd be about like Dallas. Yeah. Okay. You'll hear people say, oh, we're 200 short. Well, I don't know where they come up with this 2,000 number that they think. There was a study done uh, 12 years ago-ish. Uh, they had an outside group come in. Consultants mm-hmm. paid them to study and say how much. And this is before fentanyl, before the home. There's always homeless, but there wasn't the homeless right. crisis. Yeah, right yeah. Now. And also the border the yeah, the influx, border stuff, right? uh, yeah, ghost guns, all, all these things. Crime increases. Um, that was before all that. They said we needed to have 2,400. And uh, and so, Interesting. You know, so that's what I'm saying. If you yeah. know, account for where we're at today with crime yeah, yeah, and yeah, homeless yeah. and everything, yeah, I mean, probably 3,500. So do you think that part of that's that whole uh, – Residue of defunding the police, that whole mentality. No, this has been going on for a long time. Yeah, uh, the, the, the city, um, uh, I think most people, you know, with the, knowing the history here, we just do a lot of things on the cheap, you know. I mean, this is this could be the greatest city in the world. Oh, I, I, I always <laughs> tell because I'm from LA originally, yeah. I always tell people San Diego is a big city run like a little town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, back when they paid for the study, I mean, why did you pay for the study? They, you know, they said. <laughs> They said you need twenty four hundred. Well, we'll just stick with eighteen hundred. Yeah, we'll just stick fine. with eighteen hundred. Yeah, and and we know we need many more. So they don't admit it, but what you you can see it in the numbers. They they give us basically unlimited overtime because we need the officers. Ah, I see. So what I mentioned to you, I was working like 100, 120 hours sometimes. I mean, yeah. during pay period, like extra hours yeah. and, and whatnot. Um, it, they know we need more officers, so they just keep us longer. So that's how they backfill the need. Yeah, and it costs more. It costs of course, more. Yeah, yeah. And then it wears on our lives more. Uh, you know, you. Um, you're going to make more mistakes too. Yeah. Right? If you're yeah. tired. I mean, they and, did. They yeah. not that long ago put a restriction in there that they really wanted you to not work more than 16 hours in a day. Uh, that probably happened after some guys were doing like 20. <laughs> and, and then that's and then, a lot. That's still a lot of hours. Well, yeah. I mean, you're not going to be as friendly to people. You're, oh. you're not going to be as quick a reaction. I mean, imagine driving. being around your wife 16 straight hours. Well, I would love that, Cynthia. <laughs> so that would be 
Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, so can you give us a breakdown of, uh, we talked a little bit about this before, but you have some categories. So, you know, yeah. I, th- I think it's personally ridiculous to assume that if we throw a homeless person in housing, mm-hmm. that all their problems yeah. are solved. So can right. you talk about kind of what you see out there and the categories of people and maybe yeah. kind of how you would approach that? Yeah. Well, um, everybody's so unique. Like, I, you know, some people... <laughs> It's funny when I tell it. You you know that. I mean, that, that uh, all the homeless people are very unique. They're oh, just yeah. individuals like the rest yeah, of us. But of course. I'll say that to some groups, and they just don't get that. They just think that there's this one pill, you know, that yeah. can solve the problem. And uh, but that's the way the city operates. They they, they have this cookie cutter approach of solving the problem. So when you go out and you meet them, and you sit in the tent, and you you you, you bring a box of donuts out to the <laughs> some of the nicer ones. I mean, there's some. I have some friends out there, and I'll bring something by. But we'll get pizza or whatever. And, sure. Um, just just talking about what's going on on the street. And, but I'll, I'll always eventually get into the question, what, what will it take you to take us up on an offer to help change your life? Well, what kind of program you need? And you'll hear a different answer from almost everybody, a little bit of a tweak. I mean, it might be 90% the same, but a little bit differences, right? And uh, so keeping that in mind, uh, you, you, you kind of got to come up with a, a solution that's going to work for, for everybody or almost mm-hmm. everybody. You know? and, and again, knowing that homelessness has been around since the Bible, you know, it's, 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 but it's the crisis, this epidemic, this, this giant it is not supposed to be like this, right. you know. You always had that, uh, you know, those few guys on the street. Um, so, um, but you know, they'll always use that as a defense. Well, there's always been homelessness. <coughs> so we can't solve it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the crisis. Yeah. Well, right? the difference is too is that typically back, let's call it 20 years ago, mm-hmm. when I grew up, when you grew up, yeah, they were homeless. But at night, generally speaking, they went into a shelter or something. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. You'd, you'd see somebody pass out on the sidewalk here and there. Mm-hmm. But there were no tents. No, there was no, no permanent housing right. on sidewalks, right? And, and we didn't allow it. That's you have some rules, and you and you got to stick to those rules. You got to do enforcement on that, but that doesn't mean you're making homelessness illegal, right? But um, but we were talking about the groups I put them in. If I, yeah. you know, if I had to categorize them into three groups, I talk about the have-nots, the cannots, and the will-nots. And the the have-nots being the ones that um, <clears throat> are the easiest to help. It's uh, for lack of usually money, a job, some kind of uh, better job skill, whatever it might be. And some of them have made it out onto the street with, uh, you know, a divorce, uh, went out of work, uh, job problem. Sure. You know, there might have been some small chemical issue. You know, they drank a little too much. They did this a little too much. Um, uh, maybe a little bit of a mental, you know, some depression, some anxiety, whatever. Yeah. that led to help them along. I'm not saying that they all have that kind of a problem, but they have a lighter problem in that regard. But uh, they're the easiest to help. Get them off the street quicker. They can, many of them, the housing first works for them. You know, uh, housing first okay. with some life skills, maybe a little bit better job training, some daycare, a few yeah. extra hundred bucks. What 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 percentage of the people out there oh, are, uh, qualify? Really small. It it wouldn't be very many. And I, um, <clears throat> a lot of people ask me, oh, what's the number of this, or the statistic of that, or percentage? Yeah. And uh, you know, I, the studies aren't able to be done um, in that regard for a lot of reasons. There's some of it is, uh, you know, I get asked all the time, like, well, what's the percentage of um, not undocumented migrants that are, well, yeah. we're not even allowed to ask that. So I, you know, <laughs> so all, a lot of this is just me knowing the people out there. Yeah. That's so why I'm my asking. guess yeah, would yeah. be, yeah, in the, in the five to 8%, probably it's a real small okay. number. of those. So those are people that immediately could benefit from yeah. housing. And the longer they're on the street, they get, you know, we talked about before the, um, institutionalized, you yeah, know, yeah. just like the guy going to prison, spends Absolutely. about he comes out, he's now professional criminal right. a lot of times, unfortunately, but right. uh, on the street, same thing. You, you stay out there longer. Um, you're beat up more, you're sexually assaulted more, you're, you know, you, the, 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 the push to use a narcotic to stay awake at night. So you're not assaulted to, uh, right. to stay warm in the cold, to, uh, you know, all these things to make yourself forget all this, these problems you're going through. You sure. start developing PTSD and addiction and, right. uh, other things where the longer you're out there, it is a, a harder fit. And then, yeah, that housing first idea of just giving you a key and a few extra hundred bucks and some life skills that doesn't work anymore. Um, right. So we want to get those people off the street earlier. And then the, the really the goal that I want to do is uh, have a really good intel network out there of social workers, you know, pastors, everything, you know, that <coughs> are letting us know who's on that cusp. Right. Uh, I mean, it'd be better to even go further back, you know, and get them farther from the cusp of it. But, right, right. But at least in, you know, in the near term, uh, yeah. identifying those people that That's are good almost idea. homeless, they're a couple months late on their rent, they're... You know, and let's let's grab them first to keep them from being homeless because that effort is so much easier than right. once they're on the street. Sure, keeping them in the house and it's cheaper. So even the people that don't have a big heart for it, like I, I believe I do, um, and it just just dollars and cents wise, right. it, it makes sense. You know, as an accountant yeah. to look at it and go, yeah, it's cheaper to do it that way. So I think everybody's on board with doing that. So that's that smaller group, and then that big middle group is the the cannots, and they you know 
chemical addiction, mental mm-hmm. health issues. Um, those people uh, need the tough love. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I come at it with a place of love, with of compassion. I have family members who are on the street. I have family members who are addicts. Um, and I want to have a program that I would want those family members to live in San Diego mm-hmm. and us to be able to give them that hand up. And it's, it, it is something that they can't, they're not in the right state of mind to accept, uh, to give their consent for. Um, you know, they, and, and in our laws even, we, we identify this, that, you know, somebody's under the influence of alcohol, they can't give consent. Right. Um, you know, there's people sure. who are charged criminally with taking advantage of someone when they're, but yet <clears throat> when these people are intoxicated uh, or off their meds and they're, they're in a, a psychotic state, I'm required at this time to get their consent. Hey, I've got this great place for you. <laughs> Let me take you there. Well, when you're an a- addict and you, you don't want to go through the withdrawals, if you're, <clears throat> you know, many, the mental health side's a little different. But a lot of folks don't want to take their meds. Um, and, there, and there's reasons for that. And I've had some family and friends who've had some mental health issues too. And I understand the why they don't want to take their meds. And yeah. uh, a lot of them, they prefer self-medicating. Um, there's issues, you know, um, that, that drive people to that uh, that I could talk about more later on. But that group in the middle, though, that the, the cannots, they need us to get them into a program. We can't allow them to stay on the street and commit suicide slowly every day. Right, That's right. just... It's just inhumane to leave them out there. So there's many advocates. You know, I call myself a homeless advocate. Yeah. And they, no, no, we're homeless advocates because you're only an advocate if you allow them to do whatever they want and uh, stay on the street and and uh, and then just have a, an opportunity for them when they're ready. Right. No, that's not, I don't, I, I think compassion requires action. Yeah. Well, it's like children, right? I mean, you know, children, you have to give them some structure. You yeah. have to give them direction. And sometimes you have to be tough. And if you just yeah. allow them to do whatever they want, my yeah. wife and I were just talking about this. They're not prepared for the world. Yeah. And I guess you could argue the same thing with somebody who's down that road. You call them the cannots, right? Yeah, yeah. They're in a state where you sort of have to treat them like children, yeah, yeah. right? Because if right. you just let them keep going, they're going to self-destruct. Yeah, and I've seen the self-destruction. I've seen the overdoses. I've done the CPR. I've done the, the Narcan. Uh, you know, uh, I've seen the same people die numerous times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's wow. crazy. The Narcan has saved so many lives out there that... It used to be rock bottom, you know, when you'd almost die. You know, you'd hear right. maybe somebody in the seventies or eighties, you know, an opioid addict. Yeah, heroin and, addict. And, yeah. Uh, you know, oh man, I had that. They had to bring me back to life, and so I'm I'm quitting now. That was the, <laughs> the wake up moment. You know, now it's okay. Well, that's just Tuesday. Oh you God. Know? Well, it's, it's not even. <laughs> it's true. I, I, that's horrible. It is, and and um, you know, that's a, a little side note. Not to digress, but yeah, the, right. our 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 overdoses are far higher than what the you get told. Um, oh really? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff with statistics on crime and drug use and homelessness that that those stats get doctored up. Who who reports that? Uh, well, it come, which which one of those? Uh, homelessness uh, so, or on, so drug co- use, like a cause of death, for example. Okay, well, if it's death, it's a little different. But the okay. overdoses where the person lived, um, the, how this gets reported, the the way right now in San Diego, the only way to count it, if if the person lived, if they died, it's a different story. Okay, uh, which most of the time they live, um, is when the person calls it in, they had to say words to the effect of. My friend's overdosing. Please get here. Ah. My friend took too much of this drug, um, and he's not breathing. Please get. If it's just my friend's not breathing, come here. Hey, my friend needs help. Get here. Um, I think my friend's dying. Get here. That's I'm not an overdose. Interesting. So when I show up and there's needles or fentanyl or, or and they've already been narcanning him for a while, um, th- I can put that in the computer. That will not go into the database. Doesn't get reported. The, the initial call to that call taker. It's interesting. So I would tell you six to eight times more overdoses in the city. Now, if that person died. Well, yeah, then there's going to be an autopsy, and and I'm going to yeah. provide to the uh, medical right. examiner the evidence of the things I found there, and they'll do a blood test, and they'll find out, yeah, it was fentanyl, and and then it will count as a, an overdose death. But but the yeah. ones who live, uh, many times we get there, and the person's gone already, and all the stuff's there, and uh, you know the Narcan, empty yeah. Narcan container. You know, they take, brought they him, take a off. A friend brought them back to life, yeah, yeah. and and they're gone. They take off, and it's it, it is funny to see, uh, you know, sad, but uh, I guess funny is not the right word, but. They are laughing a lot of times Ironic. when they wake up, and I've seen the guys. They're they're dead, and then <laughs> boom, it just it hits. They they pop up. They are pulling the hose out of their nose, and they're Jesus. like whoa whoa. And and um, they don't. The doctors or the not doctors, the medics are saying, "Come with us to the hospital." We really need. No no no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And they're really? laughing, and like I, I'm getting out of here, and, and and I'm like, dude, stop. You know, please go. Go to the hospital. So literally, just go. get up and, and just... they're laughing, and, and not all of them, but I mean, it's happened before where they're laughing. Uh, that's how f- you d- you from dead to up walking away normal laughing about it. Uh, I still wow. remember this one guy by the Ralph's grocery store, and 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 it was the most b- the, of all the in a perfect example. Of what I'm telling you, this guy just gets up laughing, um, 
and and not even saying thank you to the, to the to the firefighters and the medics, you know, and 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 just uh, just just takes off and looks totally perfect and fine, you know. But that's how many you know Bizarre. these guys are dying so often, you know. It's it's so the number is is skewed, and it's that way right. with crime, it's that way with homelessness, it's that way with everything. They'll they um, I think they purposely do that, you know, mm-hmm. um, to keep the numbers looking not so bad. Like yeah. hey, San Diego's. One of the, uh, not one of the worst big cities, you know, um, <laughs> right. they pat themselves on the back for not being last. Um, right. But if you really looked at the numbers, um, you know, it's, uh, you look at their methodology and our press, unfortunately, does a terrible job. They just report. They don't, there's very few investigative. No, yeah, there's the, some good ones. That's disappeared, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I go to, I meet with the press regularly and they'll say, well, you know, the mayor's office says this. <laughs> well, of course he said that, you know, like, <laughs> did you not ask them how they got that number? <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, they, 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 they're, they're not even really embarrassed about that, that they didn't ask the follow-up question on, well, how right. did you guys get that number? Right. And I even give them the, I say, this is what you need to ask. You need to ask this, 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 and that'll show you that, that they're, they're playing with the numbers and they, uh, I never, I never see those follow-up questions here in San huh. Diego. So, so the situation is not great with crime and, and homelessness, but, um, you know, I, I, uh, so what's your third category? Oh yeah, the the the, the will not. So that's that. Will not. Yeah, that they're they're un, they're not going to get help. They're they're the bad guys who are hiding amongst the taking yeah. advantage of them. They rape them. They they stab right. them. They steal from them. Yeah. They they sell the drugs. See, they I don't, I don't, think, I don't think a lot of people realize that is that there's a huge criminal element yeah. hiding yeah. amongst because, I mean, the way I look at it, it's such a huge population now that it's easier yeah. to hide. Yeah, it is. Right. So if you can whittle it down. Yep. Those people are going to be very obvious. Yeah, right on. Right. Yeah, and and they lose customer base. They lose victims to you know to <clears throat> take advantage of. They so well, some of them will just leave naturally to another city, mm. um, and uh, or they go to jail. You know, will most of them have a, a warrant or their yeah. parole officer wants to put a hold on them or something. So um, when they see that you know San Diego's taken in a different direction, mm-hmm. so uh, let's talk about that. You brought it up last time, yeah. and I, I had no idea. So explain how social media. Uh, plays into this and these oh, cell phones the, that they yeah, have. Yeah, well, that's a that's one of the things with uh, the draw of uh, new people here is uh, there's there's numerous ways, but one of the bigger ones is m- almost all homeless people have a, a phone and they're on social media and yeah. they're just like any other person, right? So um, friends of mine who are homeless have shown me um, that people from other cities mm-hmm. <clears throat> will contact them in San Diego. Uh, you know, hey, is it warm there? What's the food like? Do the police bother you? Can you have a tent? If you get arrested for this or that, how right. long do you spend in jail? I mean, they, they, they research it all just like if you and me were, you know, we're going to go take a job in Florida. <laughs> right. You know, we're looking at Tampa and we're looking at cost of houses cost and, of house. yeah. you know, what the taxes are. And right. they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, how much is fentanyl there? Um, you know, get, all that stuff. They, they want to see that they can have a that lifestyle that, that they, um, I say that they want I mean, they think they want it because right. now they're an addict, you know, and they got yeah, this yeah. thing draw. They want to be in a tent where nobody's bothering them and they're 100 feet away from the dealer and the drugs are cheap, you know, and fentanyl's really changed the game. So, um, you know, um, if the old plans on how to help homeless who have chemical addiction with meth or heroin or whatever, yeah, yeah. It, it's a different story now with fentanyl. Fentanyl's mm-hmm. addiction level is so, so is much- it? Is it because it's cheaper and it's so much more potent? Yeah, Is both, that what the... Both. I guess a third one would be uh, yeah, cheaper, more potent, easier to get. Uh, we're the epicenter for for the the, the coming over the border. Yeah, coming over the border. It's, it's coming all through the whole country. Is pretty much uh, you know probably ninety percent of it's coming through San Diego. Uh, but the, the another one is that if you are an opioid addict already, um, mm-hmm. you know, talk about the chasing the dragon. You know, trying to get that yeah. first high again. Right. You kind of get that first high again, uh, even though it's an opioid uh, product. It's a uh, it's a it's a newer high. It's a different high. Mm-hmm. So you kind of get to be back at that top again. And for an addict who you know always wants that, the, the what people were always afraid of is you'd use more and more of it or sure. a, a more pure form of it. And it was very very expensive, you know, to get that kind of stuff. Um, and so you'd use more of it. And then at that risk of get, having that better high, your heart would stop though, you know, because right. you still can't control that. But then fentanyl comes and it's like you get kind of start over again and it's cheaper it's like two bucks to get gotcha get high where i, I you know it was like 10 bucks to get high on, on a high to just not go through withdrawals there were people that were all day long selling sexual favors stealing things whatever just to have enough money to continue to shoot up enough of the really dirty um the mexican heroin yeah it's just nasty uh it's full of particulates in there and it's right. most of them don't filter it right and so you see these huge abscesses all over their body um they would have just enough of that would be about 10 bucks to just not get sick gotcha. as they would say, you know? Okay. So they don't have the same uh, withdrawals, uh, same withdrawals and all that, but it's, um, 
what I'm saying is like, you know, you need more money to oh, maintain to fund it, to the fund heroin it. versus the fentanyl. Yeah. It's so cheap. I understand. Um, yeah. So, so it's, um, but yeah, once we get the people talking about those three categories again, you know, and those people off, this, give them a, a chance, you know, which I have a plan for that. Yeah. Th- that number decreases greatly. And I, you know, not that I want it to be zero homeless, but yeah. to be realistic, you know, for a city our size, 500 to 800 would be a monstrous victory. And what are we at right now? Again, it's uh, the way they count it. <laughs> I could talk about that for a couple hours, but yeah. there is no, uh, that's just, again, it's, if you had to ask me how you back it up, I could give you some anecdotal evidence in my own personal experience, but yeah, we're probably up in like the, the seven, 8,000 in the city okay. of San Diego. Yeah. So we're talking about bringing it down at least yeah. tenfold. Yeah. The city would tell you it's probably around three because mm-hmm. they want you to think it's a smaller number. Sure. Um, they would also co- try to hide some of the uh, growth of homelessness, you know, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, anybody with common sense and, and can count. Can, right. can tell you that they so I have noticed um, so I go to uh, plug for F45 he's village yeah. <laughs> I go to that 45 across from Petco mm-hmm. and so I yeah, take I five to Imperial yeah and I go right through there you know yeah. and it's interesting because the tents will accumulate mm-hmm. and then there'll be one day you'll mm-hmm. see a trash truck you'll see police yeah. down there right and they clear it, yep. and then for a couple of weeks it's empty yeah. and then it fills up again so mm-hmm. what what is that back and forth about? It's foolishness. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not a plan at all. It's a, uh, you know, the cops will even call it, you know, it's whack-a-mole. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like shoveling snow in a snowstorm. It's just, right. it's not. It, so what it is, is moving them to, to note, go somewhere else and they'll move a block or two. And yeah, um, yeah there is no, there's no shelters for them. So um, there's so much dishonesty in this. It really gets me mad and I start getting uh, yeah. emotional about it. But, you know, they will, uh, you know, the mayor will say, and I, he's given press conference where, oh, no, we have so many unused beds. Well, I, he says things like a lawyer, you know, technically you're accurate. Well, we do have a lot of empty beds. You know where they, what they are? The top bunk. Yeah. So the top bunk, they have put rules in place to where I can't, I can't, I can't get anybody on the top bunk. I've had people, ah. I'll take a top bunk, you know, a, a young person. They will ask you so many questions. They, for liability purposes, they don't want you falling off the top bunk. Sure. So it's almost impossible to get on the top bunk. Interesting. So we have all these top bunks. So they'll say, we have all these hundreds of beds that are unused. Huh. Dude, you, and, and they, they know what I'm telling you right now. They yeah, know yeah. that. But it's, so it's just fooling the people. We need more beds. And so we don't have the beds. Um, and because we don't have the beds, um, they, you know, they, they just move a few blocks. <laughs> huh. so they, most of these people are, yeah, about a third of them are over 55. Wow. Probably a quarter of them, I guess, count as elderly wow. and i'm making them pack up all their stuff again and, and and to the person whose business they're in front of they're hey anywhere but here but did, that didn't solve anything for the city it solved something for your restaurant you know i right. get that you know but they're just moving them around it's just like hurting people and um another effort because it's campaign time right you know it's hurry up the boss is coming look busy sure um sure, for sure. three years do nothing and then now um they're, they're trying to work on the statistic that i've tried to dime them out on uh to the press but it's we have lowered the uh, decreased the number of homeless in the downtown area, you know, by seventy or eighty percent. Just push them out. All they did was go across a line. <laughs> they're, they're literally. An, an I invisible. laugh. Sorry, it's ridiculous. It, it's it is. I, well, it, at a certain point, you got you got it because you just be you'd be angry all the time. If yeah. You see the way that they're handling humans. Right. You know, this isn't like oh, we moved money from potholes to to this other program, and and right. and then you blow a tire out. I mean, it's a person that is out there who needs help, and and we're yeah. for for. A, a, a campaign yeah and it's spending a lot of money too i mean it's not just harassing right, these right. people and moving them across yeah i the have line. the numbers actually yeah. I, wrote, I wrote it down where the heck is it somewhere here number what uh so i have something very interesting that i had written down where is it i don't have it anyway so i had oh no here it is right here so the san diego taxpayers education foundation reports mm-hmm. from 2015 to 2022 that 2.37 billion was spent oh, yeah. on homelessness in San Diego. Of tax dollars. Tax dollars, yes, correct. That's just, and so that's just San Diego tax dollars, That averages right? out to $305 million per year. Yeah. <laughs> $305 million yeah. per year for, uh, what, how many people were we talking about? You said 8,000. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Let's yeah. call it that, right? But let's just use their number. If it was 3,000, that's even worse. That's yeah, even yeah. worse per exactly. person. Yeah. That's a, what, hundred yeah. grand? I guess? Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh, yeah, I've seen different numbers come up, but I don't know that particular number, but yeah. I've, I've heard a number close to that, mm-hmm. and it was just of San Diego tax dollars. Mm-hmm. That wasn't county, state, federal. 
money yeah. spent on the problem. And additionally, that's not all the, yeah. the private sector well, I think this funding, is, too. I think this is city of San Diego, because yeah. the next question I was going to ask you about was the regional task force of mm, homelessness yeah. here in the city. Yeah. What is that? What is that structure, and what do they do, actually? Yeah, they, well, they have made no positive improvement to the problem. Um, it's made up of some politicians are on there. Uh, Council member Shock. Whitburn. Shock. Is <laughs> it is. Um, it is. I, I would just here's a general statement to not talk about them for too long. It's, yeah, that's It's fine. people who believe um, some dogmatic approach to homelessness that's driven by, you know, certain PhDs who don't spend time on the street who've done studies that have a terrible methodology. Sure. I think I might have told you before about that one study. These guys all quote yeah. the University of California San Francisco study. Yeah. I, I listened to the doctor who talked about it where they just went and talked to people. Um, and they, I mean, I could go into a lot just of detail. took their word for it. Yeah, took their word for it. Yeah. And, and then, so guess what? You know, no, the homeless people don't have drug problems. They're not, they don't have mental yeah. health. Do you have a drug or, problem? No, of course not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, when you ask them, like, well, how, why did you believe that? Oh, well, because one out of eight, roughly one out of eight, they would talk to tomorrow. And if they said the same lie, then it must be a truth, you know? And uh, It's a good methodology, yeah, right? It was, really, it was terrible. But that's what they quote. They'll, they'll quote that all the time. They're all from here. They're not moving from elsewhere, which I could tell you that is totally untrue. I'm running at people all the time with Michigan IDs or yeah. Florida, whatever. Well, given what you said about them basically inviting friends yeah. to yeah. more hospitable yeah. homeless yeah. areas, right. I mean, clearly right. there's people here from I'll tell you, areas. even from Northern California, I just had a, and, you know, I, I love, I, I won't name the, the one of the bigger uh, nonprofits here in San Diego that does a lot of good work, but up in San Francisco area, they have flyers uh, stuck to the light poles. Uh, I, I saw a picture of it, you know, please come down here. To San Diego, we have You're all these great services me. for you. No, it's more clients. It's more Good Lord. more money. Um, there's a lot of money in this. Um, yeah. Not to get into that that well, lawsuit no. that happened. Yeah, go ahead. But the the person who sued me's son was uh, you know runs one, some of these nonprofits, and I keep talking about it. You know, there's tens of millions of dollars going to these groups, and um, and I said that I want to do an audit of of uh, you know where's it, how's this money being spent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of fear from these people well, that I'm are sure. making a lot if of money. If we're talking off this. over 300 million a year, yeah. which is what it averages, where's the money going? Yeah. Yeah. Where's the we are increasing the problem. It, right. it didn't even just stay the same. It didn't decrease like it is in, it is increasing faster. Yeah. So they'll talk about the number of people they put into a, a into a shelter or into a home or whatever it might be. The number that we're increasing is growing faster than that number that they've helped. No, I believe that. So we are we are seeing a net gain all the time, no matter right. what numbers they're going. Is to there any you. guarantee that that person that you've housed mm -hmm. stays no, in that housing? No. What's your definition of success? That's another thing of mine. Right. Besides the audit, each of these organizations, you know, they all have a, a definition that they it serves their purpose. Right? A higher number sounds good, right? What's your definition? What's your right. successful? Your percent of success? Well, we're at eighty-two point three percent. Okay, what does that mean though? And I, there's one group, another one I won't name, but they um, they sold the city a bill of goods on. Uh, they would get paid per, and this is I think twenty something million dollars they got for this. Mm -hmm. um, they would get paid by how many homeless people accepted their services, quote unquote, and uh, just people in this city government aren't always the brightest, and they don't they don't ask the follow on question. Well, what's your <laughs> definition? Definition of, of the service. Well, it wasn't until the police right. officers, myself and a group of others, met with the mayor and told him that this was happening. He didn't believe it. He had his staff look into it, and like two weeks later, he ended the contract because we told him the truth. Yeah. And it was that they were their definition was if you took a bo water bottle or a, a toothbrush or dental floss, so that was accepting services. <laughs> Where I'm sure some person in the you know mayor's office who used to be a volunteer and then they promote up and they sure. now they're an advisor. Uh, and they don't, they don't know anybody homeless. They walk around those blocks where there's homeless people. They don't say good morning. They don't, they don't ask them questions. They don't treat them like, you, you know, the, to them, it's just, uh, you know, the, the, hey, this homeless nonprofit must know what they're doing. Let's just trust them and give them well, a bunch it's, of money. It's, yeah, you're right. It's, it's about pushing off. It's delegating yeah. responsibility yeah. in a bad way. Well, you know, sometimes it's good to delegate But their metric of success with the, with the politicians is how much money did we spend. And for that... Good job. You know, you spent a lot of money on it. So that if that shows where your heart is, great. But it doesn't show where your mind is. Right. You know, um, you got to you gotta put some thought into it. So, yeah, that group got a lot of money for accepting you know, people's accepting services. It's crazy. Yeah. So we're complaining about it. So oh, yeah, tell us about yeah. your solution. Yeah, first off, a <laughs> huge audit on, on everything. Bringing outside agencies to, uh, to, to look at the books. And um, anybody accepting money from the city? I can't control the county and the state. I'll try to be a loud mouth. Yeah. To, to stop that from the county and the state to the ones that aren't doing good work. But um, but if you're going to take money from the city, open your books. And, and also, let me see your definitions. Let me see your numbers. 
you know, have my auditors go in and see your, your success rate. Is it true? And, and what right. your definition, we're all going to work on the same definition. And if you want a check from the city, I'm not going to cut off funding to any of these people, but if you want this check, come get it. You got to come to this table and we all unite. I worked with the state department and USAID. We did this overseas all the time. Well, we had this cluster system, they called it. And uh, while it's a funny name in English, it must sound cool in all the other <laughs> languages. But uh, everybody comes to the table if you want to be, if you want to have some of our toys. Mm -hmm. So we go to a, you know, tsunami or whatever, or earthquake. And, um, you know, Marines will show up and sailor, or, you know, a bunch of ships and with desalination capabilities and doctors, medicines, water, all that. And, uh, but we got guys with rifles because there's some warlords there that want to steal the food or uh, we got the boats to get to that village where the bridge uh, fell or we got sure. the uh, helicopter to get you to that remote site where they need some medicine and you know all that if you want to get our rides and our protection and our desalination our, our surgical center on the hot ship all that bring your small little two-man nonprofit or your thousand person nonprofit all of you come in and be part of it. you can go do your own thing if you want but if right. you want to if you want to be part of this let's come up with a synergistic plan on how to use all our assets. Everybody put your assets on the table, yeah. pretty figuratively, um, you know, in the database. And, yeah. and we come up with a plan uh, that, that is, and these logisticians that know how to do this are amazing. But Navy and Marine logisticians are the best. They'd come up with a plan, and, and we'd solve a crisis in like a couple of weeks right? Uh, with the right amount of helicopters and bridges and bridge building. Yeah, because you want... Duplication of effort. Exactly. You don't want more duplication than duplication, effort, yeah. which is what I'm sure is going on or here. Or that they go to the ways. places for the photo op. There's always going to be some group that, that, you know, a lot of, a lot of, not all of them, but there are some charities that do stuff for the money, you know. So they're going to want to go, if you're in Haiti, you know, they want to go to the worst spot in Port-au-Prince mm -hmm. to get that photo shoot of them handing some medicine to her, or some food to a poor little kid. Right. And then they put that all out of social media to get more donors, right? If you want to do that, go ahead. Go do that. You're just not. We're, we're not giving you a ride or, or protect, you know, you, the ones that want to be part of the team. So here in San Diego, same kind of template. You got to come to the table. You want to go do your own thing? No, hey, we're not going to be part of that. Okay, good. But uh, you're not going to get the city's assistance you're have to get the with fast-tracking building project projects and, and uh, you know, you're, you're, you're over there. You know, I want you to all come to the table. And I, I'm a good right. guy. I want everybody in there. But a friend of mine who has a great uh, nonprofit that's fantastic and they have awesome success – uh, Eric, he, he runs the uh, Urban Street Angels. Okay. And um, Eric tried to do this, bring everybody in voluntarily, not with some, some arm-twisting ability yeah. of, the, of the paycheck or the check. Um, and only about 20% wanted to be part of this kind of a program. Interesting. Um, some of it's for, you know, maybe a few of them it's for nefarious reasons, but some of it's just competition too, you know, that these big ones have the same, they're fighting for the same donors and sure. so they don't want to play together, sure. which are bad reasons. We should just want to help the problem. If you're really out here to do this, let's, right. let's do it. Yeah. You know? So uh, I think I can bring a lot of those people into the room. Some of them I can't. They're not going to play. You know, but uh, so bringing them all to the table and let's come up with a plan together. And you're not necessarily going to get all the credit. I don't. I don't even want the credit. Yeah. Uh, I, but it's not about credit. It's about you know. I forget who said it. The famous quote about it's if everybody just quits worrying about who's going to get the credit for. Well, it, do you think some of those out. some of those nonprofits too? If there's a different approach, like there's dedicated earmarked money from the state. I don't know if there's federal government money or yeah. not. <clears throat> and tax money that we've agreed to, but it has to be allocated. And so maybe yeah. they're concerned about a greater percentage of that money is not going to go to them. It's actually mm -hmm. going to go to stuff that's going to work. Yeah, perhaps. But the city's doing. Yeah. And they're spending the money directly as but, opposed to bringing in, a, you know, outsourcing it yeah. to a nonprofit. Well, it, it comes with the treating the taxpayer's money, you know. As a politician, you should work for the taxpayer. You're working yeah. for your voters. You're, or even the ones that didn't vote for you. You work for You're a servant the of the people. It's way it's supposed to work. Right. <laughs> and, and then that's their money, too. You know, just like if you were going to buy groceries for your, your grandma and you're using her... Check, but you know you're not going to go yeah. waste. It's a good analogy. You know. Yeah, um, you need to be responsible for those dollars. I mean, especially with the cost of living now in San yeah. Diego being the highest cost of living, we we can't be spending the money like that. So to just throw it out there, these people, we got to really have accountability, or else you should you should quit yeah. this line of work. So what are the elements that you believe that can that need to be done to be yeah. successful in <clears throat> with the homeless right yeah. away? Is beds? We need beds. We need shelter beds, not apartments. Um, there's so much wasteful money on things. People say, well, how are you going to pay for it? Well. Pretty easy, uh, for example, uh, when they, they're buying Motel 6 hotels mm -hmm. and at the rate of about $800,000 per room. Oh, God. So if, I, if I'm buying a Motel 6 room That's ridiculous. and I'm going to make that – I could buy apartment <laughs> complexes with kitchens and, and right. two-bedroom apartment complexes for that kind of money. Um, you know, it's it's just ridiculous uh, the way and, – and give the person enough money for groceries and right. job training. or whatever. I'm, You know, not that I'm for just putting an addict or – person straight from the street into that kind of apartment but yeah, what a waste of money these these parking lots with these pup tents mm -hmm. and and they're giving them like pop tarts and shasta uh, i don't think they get even coke or pepsi 
They get uh, like the generic yeah. sodas. So those are, those that, are the parking lots a month. that the city have yeah. opened yeah. up for tents. Uh, it's about forty right? five hundred dollars a month per person wow. that's staying there. Wow. I, I think we could wow. do something better than forty five hundred. You think? Yeah. So this is the kind of thing. It's it's about look at how much we spent. Yeah, but what did you do? And uh, and these aren't the, the best and brightest people coming up with these plans either. I say it all mm-hmm. the time. Like I could just go get a, a an Eagle Scout. Uh, who could come up with better plans? Because, oh, yeah. for example, I mean, this is one of them. These these tents they bought, they bought ice fishing tents because someone on I'll his staff, yeah. yeah, thought that <laughs> wow, it's an ice fishing tent. It must be warm <laughs> because it has ice in the name. And these have holes in the roof that the heat escapes from. They're they're built that way to have a stove. Stove, yeah. Well, well these don't have stoves. <laughs> this is a big hole. So if you drive by on the five, anybody listening to this, it, it, when you drive by on the five, you look at the O lot, the one that's right there by Balboa Hospital. You can see it clearly on the five. Yep. They all have a tarp over the top of this really expensive tent that because it's covering the hole uh, from the rain to get in. And it, it is the kind of stuff that wow. you, nobody I, I say all the time, like, you know, anytime I know he doesn't listen to me or his staff won't tell him this because I say fire, your, fire some of your staff. Right. You got to get some new staff. It's going to be eight more months before I win. I don't want to see the city suffering for eight more months. Get some new people in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, not not just because they're giving you bad advice, but I mean, some of them have really messed up. I mean, we, and not to talk about the floods and all these other bad decisions that have been made, but who's even been reprimanded? Nobody, right? Mm-hmm. I've seen people get promoted. I know a few people that have gotten promoted. Uh, one of the guys I work with, he's a good guy. I like yeah. him. I told him I'm going to hire him when he when when we win. Um, but but he just got hired. Yeah. You uh, would think too if you have a, a a problem that persists. Yeah. That you would people. look for answers and look yeah. for somebody that could solve that answer. Yeah. I mean, corporations do that, mm-hmm. right? Right. If you've got a CFO who's screwing up your finances, gone. he's gone, and you find yeah. somebody else who has a proven track record yeah. to come in and improve it. That's life except for government, right? In government, <laughs> you, I'll tell you, they promote people out of jobs that they don't want them to. We had a person here uh, who was the head of the mayor's homeless. He was like the top advisor mm-hmm. and um, did a horrible job. And was asked to move on and uh, as now one of the governor's top oh, God. <laughs> assistants. So that's the kind of stuff government does. It's, it's totally opposite of, of the real world. Yeah. Right? But most of these people never had a real job. They don't understand you you should get fired for certain things. If right. they were if he was the CEO of the company, you know, he talked about that. Yeah. And the and the city council was the board of directors, that the shareholders would have booted them, yeah, you know, yeah. a few months into their yeah. first And going back to being show. a kid too. I mean a child knows this. If you don't reinforce bad behavior, yeah. I mean, if you reinforce bad yeah. behavior, bad behavior continues. So reprimanding is important. Yeah. And you can't just push these people out and have them advance yeah. to higher positions yeah. in the state. That's ridiculous. We have just been fed this, uh, you know, you have to accept these politicians that the parties push on us. Um, and and in, in this area, it's, you know, it's the Democratic Party. Yeah. And I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a center person. I'm an independent I have a lot of uh, things I, I like on the left and a lot of things I like on the right. Yep, me too. Uh, but I'm independent on it. And yeah. um, for this this uh, organization, uh, I'm not talking about the Democrats. I'm talking about the party out of, out of Sacramento and here in the county, yeah. force-feeding these individuals on us who are not the best and the brightest. Right. They've just punched the right tickets in the party yeah. for it's, it's their turn now. It seems like there's too much uh, nepotism, too, within yep. the party because— yeah. Nobody will call each other out. No. They're so scared to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's it, it, kind, it of kind of reminds you of like North Korea. So, yeah. You, know, you can't say anything about mm-hmm. it. But, um, you know, I've gone to, uh, I've gone to uh, meetings for different uh, Democrat uh, Party um, associations here in San Diego, the Veterans Group, you know, some others. Sure. And, and I've done it on the Republican side, too, just to kind of see, like, what, what are they working on? What are they doing? What is the... Um, and, uh, yeah, on, on the um, Democrat side, it's, it is a, it's a well-oiled machine. Yeah, that just pumps out terrible candidates, but they win because you know we have it's a it's a majority Democrats in San Diego, yeah, it is. and so um, whoever they've decided to you know make us vote for, um, you know a lot of times we plug our nose and we vote for that person, yeah. and it's uh, it's it's sad. It's just gone. Well, on people too long. do it without question. That's yeah. the problem. I think that they they vote <laughs> yeah. party lines because it's been instilled in people yeah. that there's division and you should be fearful yeah, of the of other, the other side, side, right? Right, yeah. as opposed to trying to understand them, or and, and even stay stay fearful of the other side, but don't be you don't got to go along with their voter guide, right? And um, some people are well intentioned; they're just too busy. We we are on this you know hamster wheel of life with the high cost of living and our kids and, mm-hmm. and, and safety issues, and we're too afraid to walk the dog in the dark and, and, and all this, you know? Yeah. That um, when do you have time to really pay attention to the news? I, I run into people all the time and. They have no idea about these big stories going on about sports arena or about homelessness yeah. or, you know, 
101 West Dash. They're like, oh, what's that? <laughs> you know, right, like, right. are you kidding me? How do you not know? Well, they're busy. They're just good people. They're busy. So what do you think the biggest, I mean, let's, let's start with our microcosm, which is San Diego, and then yeah. let's look at our state. Mm-hmm. What do you think the biggest barrier is to being more effective with homeless? I won't say, oh, I, won't, yeah. I won't use the word solve because yeah, yeah. we're not going to. Well, I think you can solve the crisis. And I always talk about the crisis being the thing that we're attacking, not sure. all of homelessness. And um, I, I, that, you know, it's not a cop-out. That's just getting it down to like 10% or 20% mm-hmm. of what it's at. Um, and then and then the, the main uh, nonprofits that are out there, the Father Joes, the Alphas, those guys, the Path, the, you know, they can handle a number like that. Sure. And so like you, you said earlier, well, back in the day, yeah. yeah, they had a place to go at night. Well, Absolutely. You know, that, that, those organizations kind of have the, num- the ability to handle that kind of a number. So you're always going to have those people walking around all day, but a place to go at night. Yeah. So, so the how do we handle this? You know, now as, as a city with this large number um, yeah. is is you know I mentioned the beds, but the beds isn't just the end state. So, as you look at the the current plan, it's go to this parking lot and here's your tent and stay here. And, now you're and, no longer homeless, right? You're no longer homeless. I got you a place, so you're not counted, and you're also yeah. out of downtown, right. so I can beef up my number of right. how many are you know I've reduced homelessness in the downtown area um, because you're right across the street. But um, with this is is right away. There's got to be a place that has all the wraparound services, um, everything for chemical addiction, mental health, uh, for your pet. <laughs> you know, it's like homeless with pets. Sure, they, they will take your whole tribe, your family. They call it or tribe. There's people that have been homeless together for a long time on the street. And they trust each other. Hey, watch my stuff while I go to my part-time job, or while I go get us yeah. all food. Where or, do we have space for that? What do you think? Oh, there's land. The city owns a lot of land, uh, or can even buy some land for this. Okay. Um, I've looked at a lot of the properties. I'm friends with somebody who used to work in the, real, the city's real estate office, mm-hmm. and we've looked at a lot of them and the pros and cons for each. <clears throat> would would like that it to be in certain areas, but not um, that for location wise. I would just tell you this: I really don't want it in the area where's the where, where it's the epicenter right now, where a lot of those those uh, uh, programs are currently exist. Mm-hmm. Here's the why, and, and I'll give you an example of why why it works. Uh, well, let's just talk about during COVID when we moved a lot of the homeless to the convention center. Yep. That wasn't even that far from 17th and Imperial where nope. all, the, all the dealers were. It was, but um, it made the dealers come to um, convention center. Yeah. And, and uh, Probably a the, mile. Those of us in the profession could tell you that it's easy to tell who the dealers were uh, <laughs> coming there. Right. But if you're over there, they're able to hide amongst them. Like we talked about the, the will nots, yeah. those ones that... So really hard to discern who's doing what when it's in the middle of that area yeah um and easy to tell when you move them away a little bit it's easy to see when those those guys come in and you could do better enforcement on it there second thing is if you really want these people to have a chance to break the habits you can't just have them um, you know i love father joe's however if i'm staying at father joe's and it's right there in the epicenter of it so i've got a bed now good i've got food i'm Mm -hmm. getting some counseling but anytime i'm going for a walk i'm smelling fentanyl and meth sure yeah and i say you know if you're an alcoholic and you're living upstairs from the yeah, bar, yeah, yeah. and you got to walk in and out through the bar. Well, it's like it's like How if you, you raise a kid and they get wrapped up with the wrong influences mm-hmm. in their friendships. Yeah, you got to move away. Yeah, yeah. Get get away from the friends. Yeah. No different. Yeah. So there there is a codependency kind of thing. Their girlfriends out there still. Their their dealers out there still. And and um, you know I've talked to these guys who were in there and they, oh yeah she's oh I say hey we're so and so and oh they're over there I'm gonna go see them right now. You know it's they're gonna be around it. They're gonna see it. They're gonna smell it. Yeah. It's just really hard to to get their life on track if they're near it still. So that moving it a little bit of a distance away. Doesn't have to, be, you know, it doesn't have to be way out in the desert, you know. Right. It's good. just just finding a place, and and uh, it could be more than one location. I mean, it'd be plenty of locations. So uh, if we don't have a big enough spot, yeah. then, so um, uh, you, you know, and we can purchase some, some properties too. I've seen some that have been on for yeah. sale recently. That well, I would think too. You're talking, you know, kind of like a triage approach where mm-hmm. you categorize people yeah. into what they need. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you could have certain facilities that mm-hmm. give them that that part of it. Yeah. And then they advance to a different facility. Oh, yeah, so you totally. could have different facilities. Yes, yes, yes. To- on the living <coughs> side, for sure, um, it's it is not the that's not the final destination. Right. That is your triage spot. That is your you know, start getting some help and see and then evaluating you. Can you follow someone? Can you come in on? Can you make curfew? Do you right. steal from your neighbor? Do you fight with the staff? Do you, you know? Are you coming in drunk? If you there's not a time limit. Like, well, you must do six months here, then six months here. You can move up that ladder as fast as you want. Yeah, we'll we'll identify some people and a day sure. okay, they can go to that next level well, it's a it's a room with 12 bunks for instance you yeah. know and then you know you're, you're you're doing your job training you're you're taking your meds you're uh, going to a I mean, whatever your your path for success is you're mm-hmm. doing all that and we um you know you're meeting with your probation officer all that um and you're yeah you can boom 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 all the way up to that here's your key to your apartment mm-hmm. and you know and we, we we found that you do have those job skills we got you you know to that point where you can 
take care of your own life with just us following up with you once in a while, cool, right. get there as fast as you can. Yeah. Others, they're going to, you know, there's going to be people that take a long time. Sure. Uh, and then there's some people that just are never going to make that out. Yeah, yeah. There's some people that have just had so much drug use, for example, um, um, the, meth, the, the meth that they started cooking about four or five years ago. It's a different uh, concoction that had mm. um, uh, does more permanent brain damage earlier in your I use. Like at the two week mark, you start having permanent brain damage. Oh, it wow. used to be at like the six month mark. So um, there's people that we're just going to take care of for a long time. Um, it's not a huge number, but yeah. it's it's not. Well, it seems like there's a domino effect to it too, mm -hmm. because if if you can get more of the homeless into facilities where they're being helped, yeah, you can identify. Therefore, you can identify drug dealers yeah. and criminals trying to bring that into those communities yeah. or our community for that yeah. matter. Then I would imagine you can curtail drugs coming into the community in general much better because yeah. they can't hide. Can't hide, but also there's less customer base. Right, you know, because uh, we're helping these people um, say no to it. You know, right? Uh, the, the old 1980s. Don't say thing. no. Yeah, Just right. say no. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, hmm. but no, we're going to give these people an opportunity. So uh, there will always be some drug dealers, and there's going to always be some of this stuff going on, but a, a much smaller number because we we've helped so many people, and I've seen some people really change their life a lot and have a, a, a very successful. There's some diamonds in the rough out there. Yeah. Uh, there, there's some that aren't. <laughs> some they're going to barely yeah. get by with like a. You know, bouncing between jobs, um, living with a, some addiction issue, but trying to manage it better. You know, there's there's not all successes are going to be. You know, I'm friends with some guys who are amazing counselors, uh, and with drug addiction, who used to be homeless, who used to be addicts, right. and they're good friends of mine, and we've developed some of these policies together. Um, so some of them are there's some great people out there about to happen. You know, about to be exposed as, you know, when we we give them that helping hand, and, and this is San Diego. I mean, this is that's the spirit that. Yeah, you know all these great things about San Diego. It's also about the kind of people we are. It's not just the beaches and the I would agree fish tacos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surfing. It's it's the we want to take care of each other. We do, and and regardless of how they that. got out there, you know, let's give them a helping hand because um, I always talk about uh, the couple parties that I could have gone to when I was younger, or the thing I could have tried, or the made a bad financial. Decision. You know, there's there's yeah. all of us have these things. If you look back on your life, that could have had that effect where you went down the wrong yeah. path, and and we might have been out there. So. Um, uh, and, and even if you don't have that big heart, like I talked about earlier, just dollars and cents wise, this is going to help us a lot. Right. I'll just use one example. Not that this is the most important example, but the police respond to about 85% of our calls are homeless related. Wow. So when you are on hold for two hours right now, that's about the whole an hour, hour to two hours on our non-emergency line. Ridiculous. People tell me all the time in my job, they reach out to me. And they're like, I'm just tired of calling. I'm like, I can't wait. I'm busy. I have a job. I got this. I got kids. I got. I can't be on hold that long. So they're not reporting the crimes. So that goes right. into the statistics side. But, but just back into this, if if a majority of the homeless people are helped, the the, the police are freed up. So we get back to that original mm. conversation we had. What number of police do we have? We could probably manage with 1,800 cops. That's interesting. I would like it to be more. But if if the homeless related calls for service, and I'm telling you all day long, it's overdoses. It's um, a, a, a homeless person in uh, a hotel lobby refusing to leave. Mm -hmm. The couch is comfortable and he's just staying there. Yeah. Um, a naked guy with a machete um, <laughs> who's running around screaming. Um, a, a guy checking door every, all the doors in the yeah. neighborhood. Um, you know, it's 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 every, all that stuff. It, it's, you know, some of it's not criminal. It's it's mental health related. It's right. going to that fifty one fifty call. The person who's suicidal, but it requires disabled. police cop, presence, yeah. which means it takes yeah, it away from somewhere else. The, yeah, yeah. So you see the high crime, the the, the mass uh, shoplifting efforts. You see that you when know, we just do not have enough cops out there to right. to handle the crime. And, yeah. and see, I don't homes. think people understand the domino effect. All yes, yeah. it's kind of interesting that we're talking about. And you, I, I was thinking about uh, the fire department too. They run yeah. into the same issue. Oh my god, I feel so sorry for those guys. Like I. Think I think it's yeah. like 80% of their calls now are because oh, yeah. of homeless fires. Yeah, uh, yeah well, fires, but I, I thought you were going to go down the other path, too. It's, it's with uh, the overdoses. And yeah, the, yeah. And the, so let's just say it's somebody who's uh, really a chronic drunk, you know, which I feel bad for them, but they, it's, they're out there and they're late. I can't even take them to jail because you won't take them because they're so drunk. They can't stand. They can't, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just, you're not, you, you have to go to a hospital. Right. So, um you know, I got to call an ambulance to take him to the hospital. Um, I, if I can, if I can get the guy to stand and I can hold him and I can get him into my car, I'll do it for them because I really feel bad for the, the medics and the fire sure. guys because that's not what they signed up for. Yeah. You know, they wanted they watch backdraft when they were a kid and they wanted to go save lives and pull yeah, people yeah. out of the fire and all that, but that's not what they're doing. Yeah. Unfortunately. I didn't think about that aspect, but you're right. Oh yeah, they're at every every medical call, and yeah. I was just talking to a former uh, city council person who had run for mayor and given me some good advice on some things, but her, her idea of doing an audit on, you know, having a better triage, a triage or a filter system at the calls for help that, because we'll send cops to the overdose, 
a fire truck will come to the overdose, the medics will come to the overdose. You know, you got a lot of people there. Um, so, you know, just managing those problems a little bit better. But, but uh, yeah, medically, people, there's a lot of people who can't go to jail um, because mm. of the, the level of intoxication that they have. Mm -hmm. and so, guess who comes? The fire. Yeah. They'll do the check the EKG, so do we, all that do stuff. So, do we have, uh, I don't think we talked about this a lot. Do we have laws on the books in the city yeah. to get people off the streets? Yeah. They've been on the books for 100 years. Okay. So, everybody keeps thinking you need to pass an ordinance. And that's just the showmanship that these guys do like a ringleader in the circus, you know, and uh, we're going to pass this ordinance and, right. and, and put that out as like a, look at all the great things I did. I passed an ordinance that ordinance watered down significantly. I say it's probably 10% the efficiency of, of the law that was already on the books. Wow. You could have just said, Hey, police chief enforce the law. I mean, that's what I'll do on day one. Yeah. Police chief, <laughs> here's your task. Enforce the law. Enforce the law. Yeah. It's not like we're going to come up with a, a new one. Uh, we don't have to. So there are books that on the books, uh, laws that say um, uh, illegal lodging, illegal camping, mm -hmm. um, encroachment. Those are things we used to use all the time. You can't have a tent yeah, yeah. on the sidewalk. That's been forever. Yeah. So if it was raining, we were always cool about it. Like, oh, hey, when it stops raining, take your tent down, bro. Uh, or your tarp or whatever you, you had. But, right. you know, we're, we're compassionate. Um, it's not, I wouldn't, be a, I wouldn't be a police officer here if this wasn't. Uh, department of clearly really, yeah i mean there's always every organization has some people you know you're going to say hey what about that cop uh, yeah I, i'd love to get rid of every good cop wants to get rid of the bad cops you know but there's not that many bad cops in san diego i mean it, it, very i believe that yeah, yeah. I, I we have a really good department um it needs a lot of change you know which i want to bring but it's good people there that are that are working hard but you know we're, we're not out there trying to um you know tear your tent down when it's raining or something right, like that right. that's all i'm getting at but there's laws on the books to take care of all of this and and we could just enforce it immediately um there's a silly rule that uh, the mayor's uh mayor had put into effect called the uh, progressive enforcement model and what it is is you had to talk to somebody four times before you could arrest them for it so like, hey, the first time's a warning, and so I'm like, hey, Frederick, uh, you know, I, I run you, I, and I, on this day at this time, I told him he can't uh, lie here on the sidewalk like this anymore. And then the next time, I look up and say, oh, he's already got the warning, so now it's a an infraction ticket, like a parking ticket. You know? And then the next time, it's a misdemeanor ticket. Uh, and and these guys don't don't get they don't go to court. Could you imagine ticket. if we were treated that way in society as yeah. citizens? Yeah. It's ridiculous. So we already don't have very many cops to contact the, all these guys once. <clears throat> yeah. But now I have to contact every person four times before we can do something about it. So that's gone, you know, yeah. on day one. Yeah. So these things can uh, – and then uh, the, the only rule that we have <clears throat> that I think is a fine rule, it's the Boise case that talked mm -hmm. about, you know, you have to have something better than where they're at. Right. Uh, to, you know, and you have to have something better for them to, yeah. to offer them. And um, our mayor and our governor are fighting in the Supreme Court to try to get that overturned. And it's like, well, Why? Why, why is that yeah. like so hard for San Diego yeah, that's not a big or deal. any civilization in, in the in the fir first world country to say, hey, we, we can have a good shelter bed for you somewhere with good food and good and showers and right, right. doctors. Yeah, and it just says you can't take them off. You can't force them off the street I can't unless you have some place to put them that's better than right, where they were. Right. I mean, we do move that's people reasonable. to another part of the, st you know, hey, you got you said earlier around Petco. Yeah. Hey, everybody, get out of here. Go somewhere else. They're, they're doing that all day. Right. But um, but to 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 say to you, hey, I. I got a pl if I have a place for you, I can I can legally say to you, I've got this really good place for you. Please let me take you there. They got good food tonight. They're having spaghetti and meatballs. Right. I'm a doctor there. Um, we got all this stuff, uh, all, all these facilities there. You can bring your friends. I got beds for all of them. Yeah, you, you bring your dog. There's a vet there. Right. Um, you have a mental health issue. You don't like being around people. It freaks you out. We got a spot where you can go be alone. You know all this stuff at a, at a location. Yeah. Um. It, and if you if you don't take me up on this, brother, I, sister, I I gotta. I got to take you to jail. Don't make yeah. me take you to jail. Please don't make me take you to jail. Right. But I got to. Because you can't be out here dying like this slowly. You can't be killing yourself slowly on the street like this. Sure. I mean, I'm not even to talk about the business that you're in front of or all those other things or the kids that were walking by. I'm not even talking yeah. about that. Just that individual just helped save his life. And yeah. uh, I'm going to be honest with you. And uh, people who, who know, they'll, they'll tell you that I'm right. Jail's better in a lot of situations than being on the street. Oh, I bet. There are, there are, and I've known family members even tell me that I really was hoping – that my son, uh, I was just talking to a sad, sad story about um, a, a guy who's, uh, it's a really long story, but he's, he's been homeless a long time and an addict and has mental health issues and now has cancer too. But his mom was telling me, you know, they just would pray he would get arrested and do time. They would talk to uh, the prosecutor on the case wow. and say, please keep him in jail longer. It's less time with drugs. He gives him uh, the med medical help he needs. He's right. going to keep him safe. He's not going to get beat up as much. There's gang issues out there with, with this particular story. Um, and so, yeah, jail was... Was a well, there's game. also a rewiring of the brain. Mm -hmm. I keep going back in my head. I keep going back to children, but it really is the same thing, which is 
if you perpetuate uh, a certain behavior yeah. by ignoring it yeah. in this case, right? Not doing anything about it. Yeah. Just kicking the can down the road. Yeah. <clears throat> then it wires a brain in a way where they're like, all right, this is okay. Mm -hmm. I can continue to go down this path. Yeah. Until you put an obstacle in front of them like you're talking about, which might be jail mm -hmm. or it might be a treatment center, yeah. whatever, until you do that, they're not going to veer. Yeah. Because yeah. they're 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 gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But we listen to these loud voices that are, you know, oh, I'm a civil rights attorney and I believe they should have the right to live wherever they want to live and 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 mm, no. Um it, you, you don't it's a sidewalk. It's not it's not a home. It's right. not what it was built for. It's it's not sanitary. It's not safe. It's not safe for the person walking. Um, I mean, I could tell you story after story about the person in a wheelchair out in traffic oh, I bet. because they can't go I on bet. the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the human waste that's out there. We still have the Shigella, you know, crisis out there with the the disease. We have um, hepatitis yeah. going on. I, all this stuff has never really changed. Um, it's still out there, and uh, we, you know, it's got to be a compassion. A compassionate approach with, with a lot of action and spending the money wisely and we can we can really make a big difference in yeah. these people's lives and and here's the bigger thing I'll tell you two things one is I know donors that want to donate money to make this happen they want to see this happen somewhere in the US a plan like this um, I ended up just finding like-minded people who were already yeah. had some programs that were kind of uh, create, things that I had create thought a of. template that can mm -hmm. be applied yeah. they yeah. want it to be that something that spreads like a disease through the US <laughs> you know the Cincinnati or Denver or whoever you know jump on the same kind of a plan they want San Diego to be uh, the the um, you know that that first city that does it sure and the reason why is they see that um, it, most of the West Coast is kind of left or left leaning and um, and there's we got all these big cities that are almost too far gone with Portland and Seattle and yeah. San Francisco and LA. They don't think San Diego's too far gone. And I don't either. I think I we can either. really turn San Diego around yeah. um, in, in short order, really. Um, they want to dump the money into it. They want to pay for the startup of one of these kind of programs, the 250 million up front, 80 million a year for first few years. And if it's successful, then we take it on. Um, and then they're hoping that it just starts going everywhere else. And it really changes our way of dealing with homelessness. Um, right. I'm, I'm friends with some of these people. Um, they won't just do it right now because um, you have to have a mayor yeah, the climate's who's not right. willing to. Yeah. yeah, this mayor will not tell the police chief, yes, start taking homeless people to that facility or to jail. He, he doesn't believe that way. He believes in housing first. Yeah. He believes the uh, professionals who tell him that uh, we're only going to help someone when they're ready to be helped. Um, and so, and there's some truth, some truth to that. But um, you're, I'm going to make you ready for help a little quicker mm -hmm. by making you a little less comfortable. You don't mm -hmm. just get to stay in the tent doing drugs all the time. Yeah. Well, the difference is, is that that people will apply that to people who are drug addicts mm -hmm. or alcoholics in your yeah. family, right? Yeah. Well, we can't help them until, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they're ready for help. Yeah. The issue with that is that's different than when you're camped out on yeah. my sidewalk, right. like you're talking about, and somebody's right. trying to, like, we're talking about people that mm -hmm. in the past were just harming themselves. Yeah. Now they're harming the community. Yeah. yeah. And they're changing the way that our society's working. Right. And that's not acceptable. Yeah. Well, um, I, I honestly think it's going to work. I think uh, other cities will start following this approach. This will be a, a, a national story, the success yeah. of San Diego. Yeah. And, um, and I had a person even ask me who – he bought into the whole I, – I talked to him for a couple hours about how the plan was going to work. And he said, well, you know, but I can see the downside of being – um, all these homeless people who want help from all over the U.S. coming to San Diego. Coming here. <laughs> and I said, well, that's kind of a good problem to have, you know. If they really were coming here with the intent to do that, I, I just don't see that happening as much. But I see the spreading, the idea yeah. spreading. And well, I could see people that want to be help coming. Yeah. I mean, no one's going to come if there's yeah. barriers up right. that's right. a drug addict. Cause no. If you want to come here and you want our helping hand, yeah. go ahead and come. I just don't think it's going to be a huge number. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there if it's, yeah. a, if it's a tidal <laughs> wave of people coming here for help. But that's a good thing. And, and then, right. you know, wherever they're from – those cities should take a note of like, hey, man, this is how you do it. And and let them improve upon the idea. I mean, it, it, it's not that we have the perfect plan. I think it's a, the best plan I know of. Yeah. But it can get tweaked and, and modified. Yeah, well, I'm and sure so it will. Maybe yeah. Denver does it a little bit better with a little twist here and there. And like, hey, cool. We all just start, you know, cheating on each other's uh, sure. we'll take it from their plan and <laughs> their, their answer, you know. But uh, I'd love to see this really change uh, the U.S. with the, the homeless epidemic. And, you know, this this whole, well, we just have warmer weather and this and that. All these reasons all the why there's nothing we can do about yeah. it. There's a lot we can do. Yeah, look at San Francisco. They don't yeah. have warm weather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I what know. I mean? I know. That's BS. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the mayor's race. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we had the uh, uh, primary yeah, last, last Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, you know, our incumbent, Gloria, of course, mm -hmm. got about 50%, but you got yeah. about 25%, mm -hmm. which is really good. And so you guys will be doing a runoff in November. Yeah. And uh, 
cross our fingers Larry can get as much momentum behind him yeah. and take it over. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I think you've got a good shot. We talked about yeah. it a little bit before. I mean, I know that when somebody doesn't vote for the incumbent, it's yeah. regardless who they vote for, it's a, it's a vote against that incumbent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the fact he only got about 50% leads me to believe that you could get at least 50%. Yeah. And then, of yeah. course, you know, yeah. with uh, things like this and talking out in the community and meeting yeah. people and you know, spreading your ideas, I hope that you can, you know, push that up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So – Two things I really like about you. One, you're an independent, which I think is important. I think there's too, many, too much party politics, like yeah. you talked about, and a, being a problem solver, mm-hmm. which obviously everything we've talked about today <laughs> is all about problem solving. Yeah. So maybe talk about what, um, why you're an independent and why mm-hmm. that's important, especially I think in today's, uh, like I said, two-party system. Yeah. You know, what, why do you think that's important? Uh, the, the how I got here is maybe not the way I think about, uh, you know, the, the why I am now, but uh, started off when I was a, a new lieutenant in the Marine Corps, and it was kind of explained to us that you should probably stay independent. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, don't be part of a party. You know, don't put your, um, you know, uh, political stickers on your car. <laughs> you you want to, if you're going to lead some people into into war, you didn't want it to be kind of a situation where, uh, for example, you know, Obama's president and he's sending us off to whatever country and, mm. and, and my troops know that uh, I'm an Obama supporter. And, uh, so, you know, they might think that it's a dumb war, a dumb, you know, this was a kind of the, the generation coming out of Vietnam was like yeah. my, my, I could my see that, the though. colonels and all who were my bosses at, at the beginning. Yeah. And so, and same thing, vice, you know, it's, a, and that's George Bush. Hey, well, it, you know, he's a Republican. So of course he likes Bush's war on this or that. So it was just like, hey, you are a, an apolitical, I mean, you're going to vote and you're going to have feelings about how the country should go, but kind of keep it to yourself. Yeah. You're an independent and that's it. So, um, it was, it was, you know, I didn't realize at the time how, refreshing and, and how much freedom you have that you don't you just get to vote for the best person and you can look take ideas from both sides so I never wanted to be a politician I, I, I'm not a politician I still I'm gonna be an you know an office holder <laughs> I don't I don't want to be yeah. a politician civil and, servant yeah civil servant that's yeah. it. I'm working for the people so mm-hmm. um, but here we are all these years later and um, and, I'm, and I'm running for this office and so I've, I've stayed in independent all this time and um, uh, I, I love the fact that it allows me to um, you know pull the best from both sides and I have people on my team that are more on the right or more on the left and, and uh, the ideas from both sides. And, and we all get along because if you're joining my team, it's just about solutions and it's not about the bickering and the, the your right. team or my team. Um, and I think people are ready for that because, uh, gosh, everywhere I go, I, I would tell you I'm more on the Democrat side. I, I have people who, yeah, we threw fundraisers for Todd Gloria. We, um, you know, we voted for, we're friends of his even, you know, but mm-hmm. we're supporting you and we're throwing you a fundraiser. And I've been to these people's homes and yeah. they're all inviting hundreds of their friends over, um, to, you know, to hear, answer, I'll answer their questions. I'll talk a little bit about some ideas on how we're going to change things. And, um, everybody's just hungry for that right now. So yeah. it's, it's really good. Uh, some people thought I just did this as like some tactic, you know, <laughs> and, uh, no, I've always been, I mean, go back and look at the records and, you know, uh, it's, it's just, uh, something I've, I've always done. So that's the, how I got here. And, um, I think it's the it's the plan we need for San Diego because yeah, um, yeah we, we uh, regardless of the numbers or the percentages I think we're like half Democrat uh, about forty five percent Democrat yeah. about thirty something percent uh, non party um, specific and it's about pretty high, actually. a quarter um, re- Republican right. uh, roughly I mean those numbers are a little bit off by one or two but, uh, but I, you know, I don't care I, if we all agree on yeah. like ninety five percent of the same stuff we all agree on. Infrastructure needs to be better. Safety, you know, we want our kids safe. We, we want to help the homeless people have a better shot at life. We want yeah. these are all simple. We want lower cost yeah. of living. There are there are solutions. I'm not going to say easy solutions. There, there are common sense solutions that we can we can have all of the above. And I, yeah. I I'm putting together teams now of, of folks that are on both sides. Some of them are you know, former city manager and 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 uh, other former city leaders, elected officials that. A congressman, a uh, retired congressman, I know, they're all on the team, and and um, uh, w- they're working different issues. You know, they're already coming up with the solution. Yeah, for this. That's great. I, I mean, for for example, uh, one would be um, the the form of government we have right now is uh, in two thousand four we changed it to this strong mayor form of government. Yeah, and there were a lot of reasons for that at the time. It made sense, <clears throat> but I don't think nobody thought of a guy like the current mayor who would just take advantage of that. The, yeah. the, our mayor has about 95% of the power. The, there is no co-equal branches of government here. Right. We need to end that. And, and that'll be one of the things I do in the first term, uh, I, I promise. Um, unless 
for whatever reason, people on the other side, uh, you know, outnumber it and fight it, but we'll put it on the ballot um, to to go to another system yeah. where the ma- there is a, a co-equal form where, where a, a strong city council well, can sh- fight back. It's checks and balances. Yes, we have to have that. Yeah. Because right now, um, I say it all the time, and, and nobody, none of the press really look into the some of this stuff. Uh, you know, they report, like we said earlier, they're not digging. There's some that do, but... Uh, for example, on this uh, housing 2.0 thing that they passed, um, it, that is total segregationist. Mm. It's they're, they're, they make the, the poorer people not live in that building. They gave the developers the opportunity to find a place up to three miles away where that building project, where they were told you have to have 5% of it be affordable housing. Uh-huh. Um, now they're allowed to, that's their building plan, but small print on the bottom of the contract they can find the poor people a place up to three miles away. It's still part of that contract. It's still part of the so they can contract. Still make this, they can make this a deluxe building, right? And the poor people got to go over there. And then not only that, but that place they make over there, um, it doesn't even have to be a new place. They can have take, got a place and they can have just um, uh, renovated it. And what's the definite New carpet or right, new sinks right. or paint. new toilet. Paint. Yeah, it's renovated. Right. So there's no net gain of affordable housing. Mm-hmm. So why would every council member vote well, except for one vote for that they're they're is when you disagree with their politics or whatever yeah that doesn't make any sense yeah. to segregate people like that um and 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 i just believe that it's because they don't have the, they got to go along to get along if you're going to get stuff for your district yeah. you, you got to get that guy to do you got to do a favor for him for him well, to yeah yeah back. well that's exactly what i was yeah. just thinking about there's no uh, there's no power yeah. it's almost like the states and the federal government you can yeah. look at it that way right yeah. so the states Still have, thankfully, some power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but our city council literally has no power. Nothing. Yeah, they can pass the East, budget. And he East, can do whatever he like wants. I, with I it. tried to get hold of uh, Jen Campbell. Yeah, you know, to talk to her about yeah. everything going on in the H barracks mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah, and just dead air. Yeah, just dead air. There's also a feeling among them of it, if you, if you were because I've had people tell me they've called to some of these people's offices, and if you are uh, were not one of their supporters. They, they won't even talk to you. They won't meet with you. Yeah. So they're only the, the elected official for the ones who voted for them. <laughs> and it's just such a backward way of looking at it. it I really can't believe is. we haven't fired these people so long ago. It's, I know. It's <laughs> such a circus. Uh, but anyway, um, and she's, she's terrible about yeah. that, too. This whole H. Barracks issue and, and what she's done or ignored, never showing up to the meetings. Yeah, this, is ridic- her, this, is this, is, this is her. Yeah. But I want to get back to yeah, giving them some power. Yeah. You know, um, Agreed. And it's where they can get a mayor who is off track. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I think that's part of it, too. They don't want to cross the mayor. No. Because you cross the yeah. mayor, you're screwed. Yeah. At least in this construct. So let's, let's talk about that, though, because this is what really bothers me. Is, yeah, they're screwed. Their district is screwed mm-hmm. if they don't go along. Well, who's the mayor's district? It's, that, it's the combination of the nine districts. Correct. He is threatening them, go along with me, or your district gets screwed. Right. Yeah. I, I just that blows me away. How have we not fired? Why is this, there's no, uh, you know, um, uh, recall effort when you have that kind of thing going on where um, he is holding things over their head? Of their their neighborhoods are going to suffer yeah. if that person doesn't go along with this dumb idea and yeah. go for it. Anyway, we got to get rid of this. Not just. I agree. I we got to get rid of this system. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I could be entrusted with it. <laughs> because I'm going, to, I'm going to be entrusted with it. You're going to vote for me. I'm going to win in November. Right. But I'm going to, I'm getting rid of it. I, I really want to. So I've got a former yeah. city manager, and he has a team of people looking at it. How we're going to not bring yeah. it back to the same way it used to be. Look at some other well, cities. You can't and, have collaboration unless the people under you, meaning yeah. the city council, has voice. Yeah. I, I need them. You to have can't voice, collaborate, even if I don't like any of them. Yeah. Because you may <laughs> not know what's going on in yeah. East County or South Bay yeah. or you know what I mean. But they know. Yeah. yeah. And th- their job is to bring right. those issues to you. Perfect example of that is is our <clears throat> our uh, neighborhood. Um, you know, all of our city city uh, uh, planning groups, neighborhood planning groups, and our uh, uh, you know n- different different uh, town councils and whatnot. That's where the best ideas come from. They're 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 from that neighborhood, sure, up to that that uh, that planning group, and then they make the recommendations up to the mayor, who then follow. Right. Obviously, you know, there's going to be occasionally an an issue that needs to go somewhere. We're going to have to put a uh, water treatment facility in someone's district and nobody wants that or we've got a, right. a new juvenile hall or, or things like that they're, they're like, oh we don't want that but but most of the direction comes from the bottom up but here it's the top down right we're putting this in your neighborhood that in your neighborhood and you just got to live with it and as you know from that where we met that yeah, night, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it was hey is there any uh, ch- how can we go about changing the mayor's d- decision on this and his aid because he yeah. didn't show up he was yeah. too afraid to talk to the crowd well, I think that, it's already done it's a done deal yeah. there's nothing you can do about right. it right yeah. but that's what happens too when you have somebody who has higher aspirations yeah I'm assuming 
Todd Glory wants to be senator or congressman or governor or whatever. President. Right? So it's, right? Yeah. And right. so if you have yes men and yeah. yes women below you yeah. that follow your agenda, mm-hmm. you have no opposition. Yeah. Well, and, and, and as we <clears throat> talked about, this this uh, conveyor belt, this uh, factory that just keeps pumping out these uh, politicians to for us to vote for, Yeah. they all get the same resume. The, most of them never had a normal job. They've worked in politics their whole life, and, and they're afraid to, you know, if you're uh, Council Member Whitburn, uh, you know, you want to be mayor someday. You, yeah. you can't really fight against Todd Glory because he's going to be the governor. For, and he's got to give the okay for you to be the right. guy. Yeah, it, it's, it's just this, like you said, the nepotism with this is it's ridiculous. But um, I, I really want them to have that power to be able to counter a, yeah. a, a you know, a mayor who has— It seems like a healthy way to run yeah. a city. Well, and it's a healthy right. way we wrote the Constitution, you know, uh, yeah. with our, th- you know, three co-equals. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, but we don't have that in the city, and uh, we need it. So, um, like I said, even if you don't like the current city council members, uh, you don't like their – still, um, it's it's healthier. If I would tell you that a lot of the stuff the mayor's put forth wouldn't have passed if they if they were equal. Even the same council members we have right now. Yeah. Um, and there, there's uh, – and it would empower some of the ones that are the voices out there. There's a couple council members I know who would stand up for themselves, um, and they have. A few times, yeah. Um, they would do it mar- f- far more, sure, uh, yeah, vigorously. <laughs> I think if, if that was in place, yeah. yeah. So we'll get that done. But um, you know, the, the city can get. We can juggle a lot of chainsaws at the same time. I think with the team that that, that I have, yeah, um, and my management style and and all that, and and uh, we're gonna really be able to make a big difference in the city with a lot of this stuff. With uh, that's gonna last for decades, you know. And, um, yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff's going to help. Well, I think it's all results oriented too, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. it's like change is hard. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's like anytime you change something in your life, it's hard. Yeah. You're, you're going to change the perception of mm-hmm. the community yeah. and the way government's ran. It's yeah. going to be hard initially. Yeah. But once people see the results of it, like you said, it, yeah. could, it could last for decades. Yeah. And, and change does scare people all the time, you know? And yeah. uh, that's the thing I got to get them out of their head. They're going to see right off the bat, I've been telling people, hey, when I win, crime is going to go through the roof. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? Uh, well, then I'm going to be honest with the numbers. Yeah, it'll be real numbers. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, our, our homeless count quadrupled. You know, mm-hmm. Why did, How did so many people get here overnight? Mm-hmm. No, it's just, we're honest about the numbers. So I, we're, for you to get a diagnosis from the doctor, you've got to have, have all the facts. You've got to be honest, too. Yeah, and we get that MRI. You've got to be honest with the doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's a pain here and that. And, um, uh, and, and the doctor does the right blood tests and, and CAT scans and whatever to diagnose you right. And then we come up with yeah. a solution. So... You know, right now we there is no proper diagnosis being done. We're coming up with these goofy plans based on phony numbers. Um, you know, it's it's just not uh, working. So it's going to be change is a little scary. There's some people who believe in me and and 100 percent behind everything I stand for, who are are nervous. They've been you know some of the older people, the, the, the power <laughs> brokers in the city. They're friends of mine, and they sure they're just a little nervous though still that. Yeah, oh man, change. You know, it's, it's almost like you'd rather have the bad guy in there who's just going to do status quo because you know how to deal with the status quo. Right. But no, some good stuff is on its way for the average San Diegans. That's who I really support. It's not, yeah. you know, uh, I don't, I don't have any strings attached to me. I don't, gotta, yeah. I don't owe any favors. I, like uh, I owe favors to every San Diegan, even the ones that flip me off and <laughs> and vote against me. You know, uh, or say bad things on on social media. It's that's fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I still love you, and I'm still your servant. And I, you know, yeah. and and like I said before, I'm not a politician. I'm not trying to do you mentioned about him trying to be governor and all that i i don't want i never wanted to do this. no it doesn't this seem is, like to what you want no, at all I, I i think you yeah. just want to try to get this city on the right track yeah, yeah. and then live your life with your family and your yeah. kids and, and live in a happy community yep yeah you yeah. don't know how many days you got on the earth and you know we're both dads and yeah. you know young kids and and uh i want to travel the world with them and i want to do all these things and you just never know what's going to happen um you know you could get some bad medical results or car crash or whatever. You just don't know how many days you sure. have uh, on the planet. So I want to get back to just being the family guy as fast as I can. Yeah. yeah. All right. Vote for Larry Turner. <laughs> yeah, Next Larry. mayor of San Diego. Yeah. Look uh, up the website in too. November. Yeah. Larry, Larry, uh, Larry Turner for mayor. And that's got a link to all the social media stuff, but also uh, LT for Larry Turner, LT four, the number four, and then SD San Diego. LT four SD is the um, Instagram. And awesome. put, we put videos on there explaining all our, uh, policies and ideas on how we're cool. going to change things. I'm so glad you shared everything, especially about the homeless, uh, kind of your vision for the city, yeah. who you are. I think we got a good sense of that. And Cool, man. Thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thanks for re-recording this, by oh, the dude, way. It's, it's always fun to talk to you. I, we, it's just like we're having uh, a beer at the bar yeah, talking that's about true. issues. Yeah. All right. Next time on Critically United, we'll talk to you later. Bye.